Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Kind of Change. Today, we're going to be talking about why being fat sucks. But I'm going to do it in a meticulous way, baby. Did I even use that word right? Who knows? Let's go. Marathon. This is Joyner, the fastest female ever over 100 meters. Bolt, considered the greatest sprinter of all time. And this is me, just your plain old average runner. I run for fun, sure, I take it somewhat seriously, have a routine, run a few races here and there, but I've never thought of being an Olympic runner. Well, that is, until Beautiful now. Editing. Hey, Sarah. Hello. So this man was an Olympian right here, okay? So the reason I bring all this up, okay, is that this, she's going to try to run. Now, you know, there's some, you know, acting in here somewhat, um, but... My point is, is he's going to show her what an Olympia runs, not necessarily verbatim. This is what they would do every single week, obviously leading up to a race, after a race, stuff like that. But he just shows her what a typically he did while he was a runner. And he had the fastest uh, record for a little bit. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get to that part. And I want to read this. And I'm going to show you how she reacts to this as the average runner. OK, and then we're going to talk about that. Okay, so let's start with day one, okay? 60-minute run, uh, steady run, 30-minute easy run in the afternoon, plus drills and workouts and stuff, okay? Day two, interval workout, 20-minute warm-up, 20-minute uh, warm-down, <laughs> and then all this in between. Y'all can see it, 60 minutes, 60 minutes. This is a lot, okay? If you want to pause and look at it, it's a lot of running. And then on your nice, on Sunday, you get a 90-minute easy run, run as you feel, which normally means you know, just run like you can You can run and talk. You know, that's the important thing about running. You're not trying to run so hard that you can barely breathe, you know. And I want you to see how she reacts to every single one of these days. Shout out to the running channel, by the way. I'm sure you can see it up here. You can see the name of the... Oh, no, you can't see it. Let me make sure y'all can see the name of the episode. Just in case y'all want to watch it for yourself. Here it is. Average runner trains like an Olympian... For a week, so you just type that in, or go to the average runner. I think I mean the running channel. I believe is what it's called. So let's move forward a little bit here. So she starts fine. She's doing fine. Afterwards, watch is ready to go. Way, I would put half an hour extra running on the same day, separately. Oh, we're halfway there. Oh, oh, still so fast again. Three, two, one. Oh, stop the watch. Remember, she's a content creator, so some of it's gonna be dramatic. You know, that's what we do as content creators. We up it so you can enjoy it. That's why we go, oh, oh, you're halfway there. You know, we just, we're, we're having fun. Calm down. Am I looking at the wrong camera? My camera is messed up, hold on. Ugh. I'm supposed to be facing like this. But the way I have my camera set up now is looking directly at me. So I'll still do this just so it looks like I'm looking that way. Okay, so nonetheless, so you see she's doing fine. Life is good. Life is great. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy at all. Okay, she's good. Now let's go to day two right quick. Want to complete all of the training and keep my day-to-day -day life as normal as possible. So still have a virtual film night on Tuesday, still go to work, still do my working day, because that is the reality for some athletes training for the Olympics. And after one day, it's hard. How do I feel after day one? Tired. <laughs> yeah really tired um i think the mental barrier of just getting out the door for that second run was really hard um, okay so the reason i wanted to show this it's day two guys it's day two when you go and watch this whole thing and, we're, and i'll get a little bit more into it i just want to let you guys know how crazy it is that when people do these week challenges or i train like a wrestler for 30 days Think about this. Somebody who's really in the profession, they don't train like that for 30 days and go as hard. You know, they have no choice but to train like this. If they want to be the best in their field, they got to train every day 
like this. The man who made up this thing trained like this every day for 10 years doing his uh, being an Olympian. Because, you know, to be an Olympian, you not only have to just try to make the Olympic trials and get to the Olympics. You have to do tons and tons of races before that. That's why when you tend to see these track stars or anybody who's an Olympian or anybody who's really a professional athlete, they have hundreds of trophies. You know, because they've had to do so many races, so many qualifiers, so many of this, just to even get to the Olympics. You have to be exceptional, not, oh, kind of good. No, you have to be the best in your country to even get to the Olympics. I just, it's just crazy to me to think how hard these people work and how much they do. And to me, the reason I make the, I made the title being fat sucks, okay, is because when I think about being an athlete, because I've been an athlete, but not anything close to this, but the fact that I can barely do a lot of stuff today, okay? I'm not what I used to be, not even close, because as y'all know, last year, I already explained all that. Y'all can go back and check out the videos, but my anxiety got so bad, blah, blah, blah. I was eating bad. Uh, I lost 100 pounds. I was doing okay, but I didn't work out. And anyway, so here we are today. I can barely squat. I can barely do push-ups. I can barely, I cannot go outside for a run. I can't do any of this stuff. And people... They try to train like an just an Olympic athlete. They get to day two and they're like, man, I've, I've come so far in life. I want you to see how this workout breaks this girl down. OK, let's move forward to uh, when she's uh, talking after day three. This is after her first run of the day. So you can see three sets of squats, three sets of walking lunges, three sets of step ups, two sets of sidewalks, three sets of bent over row, one one each arm, two sets of pelvic tilts, and two sets of side planks. This is her reaction. This is only day two. I don't even know how to process today. It's felt like two weeks have passed since my alarm went off this morning. I hurt everywhere. I didn't enjoy a lot of the running. Um, I didn't enjoy that. Oh, but you know what? I got through it. Um, and that's all that matters. I was just thinking as I was packing up about how this is the reality for some athletes who are training for the Olympics. Like, you're not going to have every day completely clear to be able to train. Maybe in lockdown, but everyone has life commitments, jobs if you're working, or stuff that will come up and will mean that you have to wake up much earlier than normal and will mean that you have to miss things or not see people as soon and stuff like that and I think it's just kind of hit me today and I don't know why I think it might be either the lack of sleep or I don't know what but if you are working and you have a busy day sometimes you just don't want to run but if you're training for something and you need to get that run in then you still have to do it and to be honest Right now, and when I finished work, all I wanted to do was just go and hug my puppy and relax and not have to run. And it's just hard. I don't even know why I'm crying. I think I'm just, I'm so tired. I'm, I'm sorry it's so loud, guys, um, but I do that just for people who don't have headphones. So if they listen to this on the speaker or TV, they can hear it. Um... <laughs> and hungry and I don't think I can do it and like I said some of it is acting I mean the chances of her getting a text message right in the middle of her talking but now the reason I wanted to show her breaking down like I did because she's on day three guys I know when you watch these uh week challenges as I did this for a week it seems like years have gone by she's been doing this for months and she's actually going to go do a competition. It's been three days. Imagine that from Monday to Wednesday, guys, or Monday to Thursday, however you want to count your three days. But imagine you're, it's Monday. 
You've done the workout Monday. You've done the workout Tuesday. You're on Wednesday, and you're already breaking down crying. It's so hard. Imagine being an actual athlete and doing this. And here's something I always want to I wanted to push in. I, I didn't want to make a full fledged out video on this, so I want to put my perspective on something I was watching the other day. So I was watching a live stream with Destiny, um, Destiny, uh, Turkey Tom, uh, Merc off the perk, Abba, um, Supreme Kelly, and uh, Justin, I believe. So this is you know. Destiny likes to do these live streams where he lets people call in and other big YouTubers or other big streamers. Uh, some. So anyway, the conversation came down to if being a live streamer is hard and it, being a content creator, is it hard? Right. Be, well, the, it ended up coming down to being a live streamer is actually pretty easy once you built the foundation. And I think oh, XQC was in that conversation, too. XQC makes a good point when he says, oh, yeah, being a live streamer is hard getting there. Once you've done everything and you built the entire building and you've done all the stuff that you need to put in place, you got the foundation. Yeah, that part's hard is building the building. But eventually, once you all you have to do is press a button and then the machine runs, that's the easy part. Getting there is the hard part. Pressing the buttons is hard, right? Same thing, but it's different for content creators in some degree because Destiny makes a good point. What if you work on an animation for five hours, right? And it takes you five hours to even make the animation. You upload it and it gets 100 views. That is much different than a live streamer who's already built everything and has to just press the button. And you've already got the audience to do all that. And then another person was arguing that, no, it's still hard, though. It's still hard to be a live streamer because you can get doxxed and all this stuff. But in my opinion, uh, that can happen to anybody. Anybody can get doxxed as a content creator, period. I don't think being a live streamer, once you built the foundation, is hard. Once you getting there is going to be the tough part because you don't have any audience. It sucks. So what did that bring me to? Being an athlete, some of these people, and I know a lot of creators probably don't think this way, but there's some people who really think they can say that live streaming or being a content creator, like this kind of content creator, like me, not necessarily a like athlete content creator. I'm talking about a content creator, like a pundit, somebody who just talks about subjects. Some people will say that's just as hard as being an athlete. And I'm like, are you crazy? Once you've got the foundation going and you got the audience, you're good. But as an Olympian, Olympian, you're always, always fighting every single day to make sure you make the Olympics or you make sure you make the trials because that's everything you are. That's all the money you're going to have. Imagine trying to do that, be an athlete while also working a full time job. Right. There's some people who work full time jobs or they have like a part time job and they're still trying to make it to the Olympics. They're still training every day. Their whole life is consumed by being an athlete. One injury and it's all over. I don't know why some people could really. And I bring this up again because Bobby Portis in an interview, he says. They were talking about how hard is it to be an athlete, an NBA athlete in, in that sense. And he said hard, hard as being a single mother of four. No. It's not. That's hard mentally and uh, that's hard mentally, emotionally and somewhat physically. But do you think it's easier to be a single mother of four? Or do you think it's easier to be an NBA athlete? I think it's much easier to be a single mother of four. You can have babies, right? You can go out and do the thing and get everything and have four kids. Not saying it's an easy life, but there's going to be way less people who could be an NBA athlete. And there's way more people who could be a single mom. I just think that when we think about being an athlete and we think about all the work that goes into being an athlete, we take it for granted. I mean, we really think these athletes are just because they're physically gifted, that it, their life is easy. They don't have to do anything. No determination. This is the same thing they used to get on David Goggins about. They're like, well, if I could work out all day, I would. You wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't. Because there's so many people who are unemployed who do not look like David Goggins. There's so many people who are employed who are not athletes. There's so many people who are unemployed who are fat. There's so many people who are unemployed who are obese, right? And you're telling me that if you had all the time in the world to work out, you would? No, you wouldn't. Quit lying to yourself. It's the same thing with people who say if I had all the time in the world. There's people who have all the time in the world who become big YouTubers, right? Who become YouTubers because they have a lot of time to just make content and do it. 
right? But there's very few people who have all the time in the world and decide they're going to go work out. They decide they're going to dedicate themselves to a 5K race. They're going to dedicate themselves to go do a 10K, a 15K, run a marathon. There's very few people who be like, you know what? I'm going to train hard. I'm going to go do this three-on-three basketball competition tournament. No, a lot of people won't do that. And so I don't understand why we always take these athletes and everything and make their lives seem so easy because we think if we had the time, we could do it. It's the same thing you hear with some people who are like uh, people who talk about bodybuilding and how unhealthy it can be for the guys who actually compete. Right. Yeah. Leading up to the competition. Yeah. You get pretty unhealthy. But people who talk about it like as if they could do it like, oh, I would never push my body to that limit. You couldn't. You don't have the discipline to do it. You don't have to worry about being a bodybuilder. You don't even have to worry about criticizing them because you couldn't even get close to doing what they're doing. You cannot get your body even close to that because you know how we know that? You don't do it now. A lot of bodybuilders have jobs, right? And even your natural bodybuilders obviously have jobs and they're just working out when they get the chance. You don't do that. When you get the chance to get off your nine to five, you play a video game. And even let's go to video games. People who think they can be in esports. No, you could not. You say that if I had all the time in the world, I, I could do that too. No, you couldn't. Where the heck do you think all this time in the world is coming? If you had 14 hours to yourself all day, would you actually sit down and dedicate yourself to learning strategies, learning how to play a video game, getting beat, losing constantly, making no money and just surviving? No, you can't do that. This concept of everybody thinking that they have time, they could do anything and they want in this world. No, you could not. A lot of people don't do it. I'm telling you, even in my life, me personally, I've had plenty of time. There was time in my life where I had three months, three months to do whatever I wanted to do. Right. This is before I was really dedicating to YouTube because at one point I did dedicate like six months to YouTube um, just fully. Well, not six. It was like four months. Nonetheless. There was a time in my life where I could have sat down and dedicate myself fully to working out. I gave myself three months. I paid my rent three months ahead of time. And I said, for three months, I could just work out or do whatever I want to do, whatever I decide to pursue. Do you think that I became an athlete right then? Do you think I became the most, my body just became a still frame and I was working out every single day? Or do you think there were some days I was still lazy? Ah, yeah, there was days I was still lazy. I did do a lot of working out, but it didn't get where I wanted it to get to. I'm just saying it's a lot harder to keep getting your body out of bed, even if you have all day to do it, to get up, to feel sore, to feel tired, to feel hungry, to feel this, to feel that. And be like, I'm going to give my all today because I have one goal in mind. A lot of people can't do that. And a lot of people wonder why they fail. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about being an Olympian. I'm talking about a lot of people wonder why they just fail in life, period. Because you get all this time and you don't do anything with it at all. This girl is breaking down on day three because she has to add this into her schedule. And it's tough. That's all of us. We'd all be probably breaking down on day three because a lot of us don't run or do anything. All right. And me personally, me being obese. Right. This is why I, when I watch these videos, it makes me think, man, how, how I, when I let myself go, when I got to a weight. Right. I was almost 400 pounds and getting to that weight and now dealing with the repercussions of that and the consequences of having to lose all the weight. It sucks because there's so much I could have been doing. I had so much time to lose the weight, so much time to do this stuff. And I can barely run. I've always been a terrible runner anyway, but I can barely run. I can barely jump. I can barely squat. I can barely do push ups. It sucks watching these people who do such these great feats of uh, athletic feats. And I can barely get myself out of the chair to do something with my life. It just goes to show you that I don't believe in the people who say being fat is great or being fat is healthy. No, I can't even do what average people can do who aren't fat. The average non-fat person. They would be more likely to be able to go for at least a little jog. Not me. I'd probably be dying within half a mile. A lot of these people can't even move around. They're so obese. And so I just want to get this concept out of our head that taking the easy route doesn't give you the better life. Being fat really does suck. Okay, letting myself go sitting around all day and just getting fat and just feeling stomach pains because I ate too much is not something you should inspire to do. If you can avoid being obese, I'm not saying you have to be an Olympic athlete, but please don't do this life. Don't believe the lie. Don't take the easy route because the easier you try to make life, the harder it will be at the back end. You can front load at the beginning and make everything easy in the beginning. Don't, don't exercise, eat terrible, and then think you're going to get into your 30s and 40s, and then you're going to lose weight. I'm telling you, on this side of it, being in the, uh, getting to the 30s and 40s, 
I would have much rather had done the hard part in my 20s and 30s and now be looking on the back end and be like, okay, I'm not necessarily can relax, but I know how to maintain my body now. I don't have to work as hard as I once did. Um, but and when I had to lose the weight, now I have to lose the weight while I'm getting older, right? While I still have to have a family, while I still have to do it, I have to do the hard part now. When I had all the time in the world when I was young to just get my body in shape, now I got to do it the hard way, which is fine. This is the life I chose. I'm just saying, please avoid the easy life first. It'll be much better on the back end. That We could talk more about, you know, scams and getting rich quick screens, but it all falls into the same thing. We take the easy route first, and then when it gets hard, we, we all we can do is complain. I know I kind of went around the track here, but I really wanted to talk about I really want to talk about this, but I also wanted to kind of give you some visuals, you know, just so you're not looking at my uh, face the whole time. And I, you know, what's funny. I'm going to shut up after this, but I don't even look at my own face. The mo You notice the majority of the time I'm watching, I'm making a video, I'm looking at the camera. I can see myself in here, like where, right here is where my screen is, right below my eyes. I can see myself moving, but I have no idea what my face looks like. So <laughs> I'm just talking straight to the camera. So anyway, that's just something random. You guys get to look at my face more than I do when I make these videos. But anyway, I'm going. Let me know what you think about being an Olympian. Do you think if you had all the time in the world, you would train like this? Or would you be a better YouTuber? Would you be a better person? Would you be able to fly? Let me know. Goodbye.